Who is the greatest of all time? Of all time, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? My plaintiff one, Counselor Blaine, will be defending LeBron James. Plaintiff two, or Counselor two, David Cohn, tallest counselors you've seen since you went to basketball camp with the Pistons. With the Pistons? He's going to be defending <laughs> Michael Jordan. Your Highness, sorry. Yeah, please, show some respect. Show some decorum in here. I mean, come on, Your Highness. We're letting that slide already? Uh, no, I, listen, I don't need your add-ons here. We're going to handle this. <laughs> Make me hit this thing. Also, when we move on, let me find it here. I think it's the right one. We'll have this sound. That's not the sound. There it is. Sound familiar? Beautiful sound. You're daggum right. So. You hit that button. Excellent. We're going to start. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> First off. All right, I'm going to hit it one more, one, more, one more again here. That means we're moving on. I don't want talking over each other. You can yell. You can get loud. It's an emotional, passionate debate. So, Booster Club, you will also be taking notes, and you will tell us who you think wins at the end. So, opening statements, other than Baker Mayfield's overrated. We'll start with Counselor Cohn. Defending Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. First Course of all. down session. Hear ye, hear ye. First of all, Look like at this. Wow. Uh, you like and one it. for you as well. You need this. Yeah. You like, you're presenting okay. evidence. You wow, this is that. nice. Okay. Wow. You're going to want that. No, no. Get on that. Okay. All right. First of all, I'll start by saying that I am not here to disrespect LeBron James in any okay. way, shape, or form. I, would have, I think a legitimate argument could be made that LeBron James is the second greatest basketball player of all time. Mm -hmm. And that's significant. And I think that that would be, honestly, a more interesting argument mm -hmm. than talking about him against LeBron James. Previous generations have had no problem passing the greatest of all time torch when it's deserved. Look at what we're dealing with in tennis right now, okay? No matter how big of a fan you are of Pete Sampras or John McEnroe, everyone in tennis acknowledges we are seeing the greatest tennis players in the men's game of all time right now. Same in basketball. No matter how big of fans people were of Bill Russell, Wilt, Kareem, Larry, Magic, they watched Michael Jordan come along and they said, you know what? He's just different. He's on another level. The people who watch Michael Jordan and now LeBron James say, Michael, and for the most part, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player. It seems to only be a small subset of 20-somethings who've only heard the latest song that's come out and said that's the greatest song of all time without doing their due diligence. So I'm here to help. First off, for starters, okay, Michael Jordan won more with less talent around him, okay? Here's Michael Jordan's greatest teammates of all time. Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Horace Grant, Tony Kukoc, Robert Parrish. Those are really good basketball players. Here's LeBron James' teammate list. Dwayne Wade, Anthony Davis, Kyrie Irving, Ray Allen, Shaquille O'Neal, Chris Bosh, Derek Rose, Carmelo Anthony, Kevin Love, Ben Wallace, Dwight Howard, Rajon Rondo, Russell Westbrook. There's three MVPs on that list, mm -hmm. okay? All right, now, on, or am I, is my time? You got, you got 15 seconds. Okay, on courtability, the edge goes to Michael Jordan. Better scorer in every way imaginable. Not just a scorer. Also, I give him the head-to-head -head in on-ball defense, okay? Off-ball defender, we can have a conversation. LeBron is excellent. And if, Blaine, you give them both the eye test, give them the eye test, and you still think on the court, it's even. Michael Jordan would get the edge because of his will to win, the greatest competitor of all time. Wrap it up, Counselor. Thank you. We will now be moving on to Blaine's opening statement in defense of LeBron. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Your Highness, and uh, Dave, the honorable gentleman to my right here. Um, <laughs> now, I'm going to start it off like this. I'm going to be a white good man. Let me hit you with some knowledge. Mm. All right? When you, when you go back and you want to find the history of the sports and the best players in sports, where do you go? Usually, I go to the record books. And let me break this down for you very simply. LeBron James, and when we talk about basketball, it's not just scoring. It's called overall basketball. There's more that goes into it. LeBron James has 37,062 points, 10,045 assists, 10,210 rebounds, shot a better field goal percentage than Michael, and shot a better three-point percentage than Michael. All right, that's 4,770 more points, 4,412 more assists, 3,538 more rebounds. So when we go look at the, the overall basketball player, a GOAT, I think that's what we go to. And, let's, and the one knock on LeBron is what? The teams he had to play in the who? The finals, his four and six record. Mm. Let's look at who MJ had to play in the finals. 
All right, he played the Lakers with Magic Johnson and James Worthy when Magic was almost going out the door in the NBA. James Worthy, James Worthy was hurt that series, didn't play game five. Let's go to the Trailblazers with Clyde Drexler and Terry Porter. Clyde's nice. Terry's decent. One of the worst of finals benches that you'll ever see. All right, then we got Charles Bar Barkley and Kevin Johnson. Good team, won a lot of games. Not, I've seen better. All right, then we go to the Jazz. You got Stockton and Malone, played them twice. Then you got Gary Payton and Sean Kemp. Go look who had LeBron had to play in the finals. He had to play the Spurs three times with Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and hell, who else? Kawhi Leonard. Mm. All right. Then he has to play against the Thunder. Yeah, they're pretty good. Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and Serge Ibaka. Mm, pretty decent. Let's go to the Mavericks. All right. You got Dirk, the Flamingo King, Nowitzki, Jason Kidd, and one of the best defensive players in Tyson Chandler. Seconds. That's fine. Good. Let's go to the Warriors, one of the best shooting teams and who beat the Bulls for the most wins in a single record. That's Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. And then they split one-to-one -one after LeBron won. And what did the Warriors do? They had to add Kevin Durant, and he played him twice in the finals. Good job, Counselor. I appreciate you guys both keeping with the decorum of this courtroom keeping it among the time. It was a good debate to start off. I'm still so undecided right now. But now we're moving on to when I asked them one devastating question towards their argument. Here it is. Let's start first. Michael Jordan. Counselor Cohn. Michael Jordan got drafted in 1984. He didn't make the NBA Finals with the Bulls until 1991. That's a long time, and some could argue he had to wait for help to get on the way. What do you tell people that say LeBron had better success earlier and had to do more, and why did it take Michael Jordan so long to make it? Well, first fun? of all, LeBron didn't win a championship any sooner than Michael Jordan did, but I will say that both of them got drafted to franchises that were disastrous, okay? Chicago was a disaster. So the fact that we even can look back and say Chicago, the Chicago Bulls is a legitimate basketball franchise, I mean, look, I know that they had a great coach, they had a great GM, but that's because of Michael Jordan, okay? Now, for uh, to talk about what Blaine was talking about, I want to break down some of these things, because I did discover some things in this that actually shocked me. Okay? If there's any discovery, it needs to be presented to the courtroom, by the way. So. You have it. I get okay, it okay, yeah, I got it right here. All right, sorry, my fault. So we're talking about score, okay? Michael Jordan is a superior scorer in every way possible, okay? 10 scoring titles, LeBron has one, okay? Most points per game all time, 30.1. Most playoff points per game all time, 33.5. Most points per game in a final series, 41. And for those who say that Michael Jordan was only a superior scorer, I say again, Michael Jordan was a better on-ball defender. Nine-time all-defensive first-team selection. LeBron had five. In 1988, he won the Defensive Player of the Year Award. LeBron has never won that award. When he won, when Michael Jordan won the Defensive Player of the Year Award, he did so by averaging 35 points per game. No other Defensive Player of the Year has ever averaged 30 points per game at any point in their career. He is the all-time leader in blocks for a guard, okay, and a three-time steals champion, all right? Most blocks all-time by a guard. So, with that, now, a lot of what Blaine was saying, I think you do have, look, like I said, I'm not here to disrespect LeBron James. His career, his career longevity is extremely impressive. And that's how he's putting up a lot of these numbers. Mm -hmm. He's going to be, the game has changed. We all know this. Look, he's going to be on the top of the record books in a lot of different, in a lot of different categories. But I will say, another one, in-game durability, nine seasons, Michael Jordan played the full 82-game slate. Mm -hmm. No LeBron load LeBron James did that once. Okay. All right. Once. Blaine. Question for you yes. about LeBron. When we talk about goats, we talk about the clutch factor. Mm. There's been a lot of talk and a lot of evidence that LeBron, when he gets to the finals or has an opportunity to make a big shot, he tends to pass it up or not make the big shot. How can you defend Michael Jordan having more championships and more clutch shots and supposedly having a better clutch gene? Is that not one of the most important uh, ingredients in a, in a goat? Well, LeBron gets a bad, a bad rap for saying not being clutch. Uh, Michael Jordan has nine buzzer beaters. Sustained. LeBron has seven. Um, you go look and LeBron statistically in game, in clutch moments, has better stats than Michael Jordan in clutch moments. Efficiency-wise, you can, you can look that up. Do you have anything to back that up? Yes, I have. Uh, I, well, I didn't put evidence in, but it's all, hey, you can type it in and go look it up if you want to. I don't have to because it's, it's just like a memory that's not that goes in my mind. Goodness. But that's fine. You go look it up statistically. No, no. And LeBron gets a bad rap for making the right play at the right time in clutch moments. 
All right. It's the NBA. If you're getting doubled, I would rather you pass to someone who's wide open for a great look than put up a bad shot. A bad shot's always good until it goes in, but I will never knock a guy. And being the GOAT doesn't mean you have to be the most clutchest guy in the world. That, you have to be somewhat clutch, but not the clutches. The, being a GOAT is a, being the best overall basketball player. And it's not just being clutch. It's not just being a mindset. Can you score? Can you rebound? Can you pass? Can you defend? Did Michael have nine? Yeah, LeBron had five, five or six. And in today's age, right, not even today's age, but you go look back the past 10 years, LeBron has been a phenomenal defensive player. Michael Jordan, when it comes to the big games and the big teams, Michael Jordan wasn't guarding their best offensive player. Who was it? 15. It was Scotty and another guy. It was, um, God, what's his name? Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Sorry, a lot of words. He's not going to guard Carl Malone. Like Michael Jordan. It well, happen. guess who can? LeBron James. Look, and all right, all right. Hey, hey, that, that wraps up the 15 seconds. Now we've got open floor for two minutes. You guys, I'm going to hit this button. Ooh, I like this. Y'all go at it. I don't want talking over each other. Blaine, you can start. Tell him why he's wrong. Yeah, let me tell you why you're wrong in, in, in a couple things, all right? You know, I, I look at – you look at uh, one of the series uh, Michael Jordan won, all right? He averaged 27, 6, and 5, and they won in 5. LeBron, first of all, is the only player ever to average a triple-double in the finals. And you know what happened in the triple? When he averaged a triple-double, he lost to the Warriors in five. The different level of competition we see now and back then. And another thing, which I will pull up in my evidence later, illegal defenses. Zones, if you could have run zone defenses back in the day, Michael would have never had the career he'd have. Mm. He would never have the career he'd have. No, that's fine. That's fine. But LeBron has been do having to deal with that his whole career, and LeBron's adapted. When you go look, I'm telling you, from 30 to 40, 50 years now, that's great. Last Dance, cool Netflix series, or whatever the hell it is. You can have the cool gambling stories, but I'm going to have a guy where I can go pull up any record book in any game, whether that's passing, shooting, or rebounding, and he's going to be in that top five. You know who's not? That's Michael Jordan. If you're only using individual metrics to, to judge greatness in a team sport, then you're doing it wrong. I'll, I'll start with a few things that I think LeBron is superior at, okay, and we can work from there. Okay. His ability to play one through five is phenomenal, okay? I think he's a greater facilitator, just like we talked about before, and I think he is one of the best off-ball defenders I've ever seen. His ability and desire to come and block shots from behind is truly incredible. But are you really going to say you don't think Michael Jordan was a better on-ball defender? Um, yeah, I'm legitimately you, you, you legitimately only think that Michael Jordan was superior at scoring, or not even that. I mean, I mean uh, steals. I say he's superior at steals, but uh, what, other than that, then I mean, you think yeah. you think Michael's going to be going to be a great on ball, phenomenal on ball yes. defender today? You I think, think he, Michael can I stay in front of Kyrie? Great at anything he ever chose to be. I think he could chef up and cook an omelet. But why isn't he great at assists and Rams. rebounding? I mean, rebounding, look, I was what I wanted to talk to you about rebounding is because I had it on my list is LeBron is two inches taller and plays the forward position. It's mm -hmm. why I don't ju I don't judge LeBron for not having as many steals as Michael, even though he's played far more games. It's mm -hmm. just they play different positions. The same thing with 15 seconds. Guard. The same thing with who they guard. Here's another thing I found that was shocking to me, which I think we could say maybe the greatest three years any athlete has ever had. When Michael Jordan came back from retirement, 96, 97, 98 three full seasons, won three NBA titles, three finals MVPs, two league MVPs, three scoring titles, three defensive first teams, and he didn't miss a single I got one single, thing. Can I he didn't what, miss what, you, you earned game. a reply, reply to that. Zero well, game. it's funny. That, that team, when Michael left the Bulls and went to play Major League Baseball, that team went 55-27 and 27 and made it to the Eastern Conference. Did they win the championship? They went to the Eastern Conference Finals. What happened when LeBron left the Cavs? They could barely win a basketball Did game. they win the championship? They but had you, the greatest coach. Phil Jackson supposedly the greatest continue, coach of all he time. Is. And Scottie Pippen is this warrior of a they basketball They went to the Eastern player. Conference Finals, they Dave. They went 55-27. and 27. That, tell you how, you, that tells you how good that that team was. LeBron left the Cavs and they could barely dribble a basketball. <laughs> All right, guys, I love, love where our head's at right now. We're going to uh, go to the closing statements. You have one minute. I'm, I'm enforcing this one tough. Oh, you yeah. said two minutes. Right? Two, oh, that's fine. We'll go two minutes. Okay. Two minutes, closing statement. I can just, my core room, I'll change the rules. Cone, start. Okay. Look, I'll close with this. Thank you. No I'll, I'll close with this. When discussing the greatest of all time, we're arguing over inches. For right? sure. And I like what Oliver Stone wrote in Any Given Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's the guy who's willing to die mm -hmm. who's going to win that inch. To me, Michael Jordan was willing to die for his greatness. Now, look, I'm not going to try and change your mind. I respect your sports IQ. I come in every day. We talk sports for together. Sure. Okay? Here's what I'll say, and I mean this honest to God. I'm not just trying to create good content. If my life 
were on the line, who would I trust with 10 seconds to go to go and get that bucket? It's Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. With my life on the line, who would I trust to stop the other guy from getting a bucket? It'd be Michael Jordan. With my life on the line, if he makes them, I live. If he misses them, I die. Who would I trust to go to the stripe and knock down a pair of free throws? I want the guy who used to hit him with his eyes closed. I want the guy with more championships, more MVPs, more scoring titles, and more defensive awards. I want the guy who never had his jersey burned, okay? I want the guy who didn't pass it out to Ray Allen and Kyrie to hit his game winners. Mm -hmm. I want the guy who did think it was a failure when his team didn't win the mm -hmm. final. Okay. Most of all, I want the guy who the other guy wanted to be. Michael Jordan wasn't wearing 23 because LeBron James did it first. It was the other way around. Michael Jordan wasn't starring in Space Jam or signing with Nike because LeBron James did it first. It was the other way around. 30 seconds. So if we want to have an argument about who the greatest athlete of all time is, and I say Michael Jordan, and you say Tiger Woods, and you say Babe Ruth, then we should have that because our fans deserve that. But as it pertains to basketball, basketball, the greatest who's ever done it is Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Wow. It's pretty good. Go ahead, Blaine. Well, I'll say, first of all, it's funny you bring up other people hitting game shots, but you don't hear anything about Paxton hitting that game winner. Um, and second of all, probably a lot of reason that is because Michael came before LeBron. Maybe if it was the other way around, Michael probably would have looked up to LeBron. Um, my closest statement is this. Um, if you want to talk about the most clutch guy, yeah, give it to Michael. Great mentality, give it to Michael. But the problem with people have with this is they get emo emotionally attached to it. That's what they do. That's why I'm looking at you right now and you're a grown man wearing another grown man's jersey, right? When it comes to me, when I look at basketball, I don't take the antics outside of it. I look what goes on on the court in a complete game. All right, and a complete game is not the guy who can just score the most points. The complete game is the guy who's better overall at basketball, the best overall at basketball. And, you know, I kind of hit on this earlier. You know, I kind of got some, some hate for it. Um, can we bring up that evidence of that quote from Michael? Oh, wow. We're, we're, we're presenting evidence here? Yeah. yeah we are see, in my we, closing. see if we can get it up. We may have yeah. some technical difficulties in the courtroom. If that's the case, we'll just move on. Tell us what the quote was. Oh, the quote was exactly from Michael Jordan talking about illegal defenses. He said, if the zone defense lived while I played, I would never have had the career that I had. LeBron has have gone out of his way. You will never see another person realistically do what LeBron did in the basketball game. First player with 30,000 points, 10K and 5K assists, or 10K and 10K assists. If you look at it, the memory, the, it, will live, it will live forever that LeBron James will be the greatest overall basketball player that you have ever seen to step on a court. And longevity matters when you're the GOAT. It matters when, you're, when you can do things with guys that aren't that good. When he came back from a Warriors team that was three and one, that's the best offensive team that we've ever seen play the game. It matters that no matter the antics or the hate that you have for somebody, if you can approach something without emotions behind it. Like and I don't approach with emotions behind it, I approach with my eyes set. And that's probably the difference between y'all's generation and my generation. You're caught with feelings. I, I don't get caught with feelings. That's I get it. caught it's... with what I see on the court. All right, that's closing arguments. I want to tell you guys, first off, good job, really. This is not me trying to be funny. Really good job by both of you. The evidence, I mean, Cone brought in a binder, Blaine. I had, had some. clips, yes, had clips. I'm going to render my judgment. I'm going to render my judgment. Here's what I got. After listening to both you guys, like I said, it was fantastic. After going through mountains and pages of evidence, I will decide, and I don't want to hear anything past this, any oohs or ahs, okay? I will decide that the greatest basketball player of all time is Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael Jordan I've got it, and here's well, I why. Wish I, I wish Thank I could you. show my evidence. No, here's you, your That would be great. Why. Here's why. I believe, I disagree where I disagree with you is mm -hmm. the clutch factor is a huge part of being. Well, statistically, LeBron's more clutch than Michael. Okay. Well, you can believe that. But it wasn't, it wasn't like it was won by a whole lot. It was a great job, guys. I'm going to put my gavel and the gavel thing that you bang on, whatever you call that. Hey, if you like what you heard and you want to hear more, go on over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Check out Crane & Company live every day from 2 to 3 Central where you can hear us spit it straight.